Pozdrav svima. This is Adis Chaman and I'm excited to be a part of Humans of Telecom. Hey everyone, a very warm welcome to Humans of Telecom, the Unplugged podcast. This is your host Anurag Agarwal, Chief Revenue Officer at GMS. As many of you are aware, this podcast delves into the dynamic world of telecom, offering a glimpse behind the scenes and highlighting the personal stories of industry leaders. We get to hear about their experiences, gaining valuable insights and inspiration that resonate so deeply in our lives. Well, speaking of captivating narratives, today's guest is no exception. I first met him at an industry event in Croatia back in 2023, where I discovered his intriguing venture, which is disrupting the CPaaS industry. This venture has been recognized by an industry body GSME with the award for being the most innovative startup, an accolade that truly speaks to its impact. And not only that, when I asked this individual about his background, I learned about his rich blend of cultures and ethnicities, which only heightened my fascination with his journey. So, let's hear it directly from the horse's mouth. Please join me in welcoming Aris Chemin, co-founder and COO at Grambel. Aris, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this journey. We'd love to hear more about you, which part of the world do you belong to, and from where are you joining this podcast today? Amazing. Thank you so much, Anurag. And uh, it's it's a great pleasure for hosting me at your podcast. I've uh, I've heard a few of them and it's it's really amazing and I'm really honored to be uh, to be here with you today. Basically, I'm currently based in uh, or I'm I'm currently in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, where I will be for a couple of months here. Uh, I'm I'm uh, in general based in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where we have our office and I'm I'm already there for the past 12 years. But uh, my background is uh, quite interesting because um, I don't know if, if a lot of people know about uh, the, the history and geography. Um, I come from a country called uh, or used to be called Yugoslavia, which now is uh, being uh, uh, seven countries, basically. Uh, my parents are uh, from Montenegro. I've been uh, born in Dubrovnik, Croatia, uh, holding Bosnian passport where I actually live and my family lives. Grew up in Egypt, lived there for 15 years. So it's it's a little bit of uh, diverse cultures and and uh, let's say cultures and nationalities. Absolutely, Adis. I think that's so visible right from the greeting that you gave to my interaction with you. I could make out that uh, there are so many cultures embedded into this single person, and that's what we look forward to discussing further. So let's hear a little bit more about Adis. While today you are the COO and co-founder of a very dynamic venture. How has the journey been for you so far, starting from your childhood? Is this something that you were interested in and to getting into telecom or was it accidental? And how has the journey been so far for you? Oh, that's a quite interesting question. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a quite long and interesting journey, uh, if, if I would say it as that. Uh, let's say I have a passion since I was a child for, for sales and uh, marketing in general. Uh, but mainly for sales. So when I was was in elementary school, I remember with my classmate back in Cairo in Egypt, uh, we used to uh, have those pocket back then. Pokemon was was just hyped in the nineties, early nineties, and everybody, all the children were uh, watching the, the the cartoons, playing on Game Boy, you know, the the, the games and everything. And uh, we had the stickers, so we used to trade those stickers uh with each other and we ended up also selling them like uh for for other children in other class classrooms and uh that's how i started the the, the career in sales moving then uh, to the university uh, after finishing university i started a little bit with the uh, with technology which is not my background it but i was uh working for for almost a year in a hardware uh store where i learned a lot about the industry uh, about the it industry from experts and it was quite good uh let's say push for me to go to to where i am today and uh yeah that's that's um one of of the steps uh how i started in in, in sales uh, after that i have quite interesting uh industry that i joined after that year and it's a specialized one <clears throat> which is basically 
the arms and weapons industry <laughs> and uh, a lot of people will be like wow what are you doing like from from it to arms and, uh, and weapons to telco yeah that was back then um i found the opportunity it was quite interesting for almost three years i i did business development with international um, companies uh, such as glock f and herstal those are the ones that are like um the, the pioneers in this industry um, and yeah, after that, of course, moving to telco and, uh, here I am today in the telco industry for the past 14 years. Amazing. So there are so many interesting aspects you've spoken about, you know, Pokemon stickers, and then you talk about arms <laughs> and ammunition in the same breath. And then we finally talk about telecoms. All right. Yes. So there are so many different things that you have dabbled into over the past so many years, Adis. And if I ask within this journey, if there is one or two memorable or impactful moments, what would those be? Oh, one or two. I mean, uh, as I said, it's a long journey and interesting one. So every, every, every and each moment is quite impactful. I mean, uh, I would, I would say the most impactful moments are meeting people like, like we met, you know, I mean, I was, um, I think I had you on LinkedIn or we, it, our industry, I always say it's a small family, right? It, although it's a big industry, we are everywhere in the world, but small family. So we end up knowing each other, although we don't know, or we didn't ever meet, uh, physically. But uh, then we met in an event, right? So this is one of the of the of the moments uh, that uh, that have impact on me. Meeting uh, different uh, backgrounds, different cultures, especially in this industry, um, this is this is something that I really um, appreciate and and uh, and love. I learn a lot from people. I'm I'm uh, I'm a person that loves to 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 also ask questions, and uh, I like to know like what is your uh, background or story. You know, we all have some kind of stories, interesting stories. We we talked about it like a couple of days ago, and uh, and you mentioned that you, when you talk to different people, uh, there are a lot of different interesting stories. So I think this is something that that's uh, very impactful for me. Yes, absolutely. I think the industry is for sure a fairly close-knit one. So many guests who have come on this show have spoken exactly about that. And yeah, for sure, I can resonate with your thoughts. <laughs> Definitely. All right. And now moving on to what we call the human side. So let's learn a little bit more about Addis. So Addis, while you've told so many different aspects about you and uh, so many people in the industry know you, but if there is still something unknown or shocking about Addis, what would that be? Oh, unknown or shocking. I don't know if shocking, uh, there is a lot of, um, shocking things. I'm, I'm a little bit boring. I think <laughs> just joking. I, I, I don't know. I can, I can, uh, mention one thing. Probably, um, a lot of people don't know that let's say a less a 10 years ago, more or less 10 or nine years ago, I uh, started my first, uh, let's say, uh, venture or, or, or my first startup, uh, with a friend, which was quite interesting and it's one of my passions actually like uh my passion is uh photography and videography in general but photography in general and um when i was quite young i um uh, i collected i started collecting money by by doing various jobs let's say helping people like in my neighborhood uh, doing some some different uh, you know those uh, those jobs when you're young like i don't know cutting wood or, or washing a car or something like that to collect some money to buy my first camera uh back then I cannot recall was it uh was it Canon or Nikon I cannot remember it that was quite a long time ago more than 20 years ago and uh I really started taking photos and uh experienced passion in that so I started my first uh venture in in roughly 2014 15 uh with a friend that we wanted to create uh, an 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 production company um unfortunately it was uh, i mean everything was good for for a couple of months we even uh, got few clients but unfortunately you know uh, every all of us we have our own paths and journeys so um it's it's um it, it's it's a pity that it didn't continue but uh that that was my first let's say venture that that helped me to path my way uh through through uh the, the career and also uh, to create Grumble with uh, with uh, with my uh, partners, uh, friends, and and the co-founders. So oh, yeah, that's that's one thing I think that most of people don't know about. Interesting. So I guess this uh, entire uh, flavor of uh, creating something has been a strong part of your life. You know, through the various ventures you've been involved in, I think it just shows that 
you are quite into a mode of creativity and even your current venture uh, grumble which has so many interesting aspects about it i think that's just testimony to that so cool sure. now we know something new about adis <laughs> <laughs> sure sure yes definitely all right and other than all these things adis is there anything else which is your passion or something else that you do to recharge yourself uh yes indeed i mean um i in general like like all of of uh, of boys we started like playing sports right football and tennis i used to train tennis for two and a half three years when i was a teenager football was definitely a daily task let's say when you are at school uh, before the classes start but recently i mean couple of years ago um i started hiking and it was uh, because of my brother he goes weekly hiking in the forests and mountains uh, surrounding sarajevo and uh, bosnia and around all around bosnia and also croatia and montenegro so i was in the beginning like uh, why do you do that like it's it's you know you have to wake up early morning and do and, and go and hike and spend like uh, i don't know hours until i did it first time and i saw how peaceful it is so it's really you really recharge because first of all you are connecting with the nature i mean when you go to to a forest or a deserted place when there is no uh, no no where there are no cars humans pollution you just feel that you are so peaceful you lay down on the grass if there is a lake around you you know you hear only the birds the insects and that's it so pretty much this is a recharging moment so when i'm back in 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 europe or where i can really do the the the, the proper hiking through the forest i do that when i'm in uae um from time to time unfortunately not not very frequently but i go to uh to 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 rasakhem or fujera where they have uh, the rocky mountains and i do the same or or i just go for uh, for a run jog you know so yeah this is how pretty much i i do recharge and of course the photography part where i i uh, try to capture uh, every moment either with my uh, nikon d500 or my samsung phone which which all of us like now now they have the good cameras and lenses so this is what what's really recharging me interesting so so many passions associated with one person and i think that just reflects in the creativity which eventually comes out wonderful yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Adis. And uh, now we play an interesting game. Sure. Just the other day, I was doing another podcast, and uh, you know, I lost miserably. And let's see how well <laughs> I fare out this time. So, uh, here we ask our guests to tell us three statements. Two have to be truths. One has to be a lie, and mm -hmm. I'll try and guess the lie. So, would you have three such statements for us today? Sure. Yes, I do. Quite interesting ones. Okay. So yeah let me let me begin so one of them was that um years ago i was held uh, at a gunpoint <laughs> and uh yeah i was i was pretty much uh it wasn't very pleasant uh experience uh, i was searched and it was it was quite uh, uh, uh hectic and nervous one i was quite nervous uh the other one was uh that i did uh, a zip line in dubai marina so there is a zip line uh, there are actually two zip lines in dubai i did the one in dubai marina which is uh, uh a, a shorter one the longer one is in ras khema which is one point something kilometers and the third one is when i was younger i had an asthma attack i mean i had multiple asthma attacks and i used to um i had to go to hospital and take injection to be able to breathe and open my uh let's say the breathing vents so yeah those are the three uh statements from my side let's see if you will win or or not <laughs> <laughs> okay so amongst the three statements let's take the third one for a moment okay let's just presume that health condition was something of a truth so i'm going to say that's possibly a truth uh, the gunpoint one also i'd like to believe that that's uh, something which has happened and that will be an interesting story to hear further interestingly in the past we've had another guest who has mentioned a similar situation of being held at gunpoint so you know i'll <laughs> see if uh, it's equally true for you as well yeah and uh, third one while well, that's also very interesting about uh, zip lining but i will possibly say that's a lie and maybe hopefully you have an even more interesting story that you've done the zip lining in rasul khema and not in dubai so <laughs> i'll say that the second one is possibly a lie and the first and third are truths so am i right out here 
Yeah, yeah, the zip line. So let me uh, the zip line. I didn't. I have it in mind. I was sitting a lot of times in uh, Dubai Marina Mall and uh, watching people passing by, and I'm thinking about it for the past few years that I want to do that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do any. The one in Ras Khaimah, I don't think I will do <laughs> that one for a simple reason. I have a friend who told me like, hey, he got stuck a little bit in in the midway, and uh, they told him that just just relax, we will come and 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 uh, like um, help you move which which happened of course but i wouldn't do it to be honest but the one in marina dubai marina i would so yeah that's that's why i didn't do it yet uh which i have in mind to do but uh, yeah that will be probably some sometime soon the other two yeah indeed when i was a child i used to have asthma and uh many many sleepless nights my parents had and myself so yeah i remember as a child like waking up uh more in the in the middle of the evening cannot uh, even breathe properly so they had to rush me to the hospital a few times in my lifetime i had to take injection to be able to breathe so that's that's the truth and uh, the, the the first one being held at the gunpoint, yes, it wasn't by any criminals. It was by um, uh, European forces, which are stated here in Bosnia, as we used to have previously in the 90s, early 90s of war. So they are still here like as peacekeepers. And when I used to work in the, in the, uh, in the ammunition and the weapons and ammunition uh, industry, I used to deliver for them some, some, some kind of equipment or, or, you know, different, uh, different uh, things that they used to purchase. But I forgot that on the dashboard of my car, I used, I had the, uh, from the shotgun of the uh, hunters, we had a bullet, which me and the driver we didn't realize it i mean totally and the guys i remember it was one lady and one guy bulgarian european forces they just took out their ak-47s and uh they told us can you get out slowly from the car uh wait till we inspect the car and everything it was quite i mean in the end i knew nothing will happen you know because it's it's we are <laughs> it's nothing illegal right but it was very 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 hectic in a few minutes till they cleared us out you know so yeah that was that was that part hmm interesting so you have had a very interesting twist i must say that it wasn't a criminal but it was the forces which actually held you at gunpoint <laughs> yeah that's why i wanted to make it interesting you know i didn't say i said we were held at the gunpoint but not by so so to make it a little bit more interesting but yeah it was it was by the the the, the forces which in the end they cleared us out i mean they figured out okay this was a mistake usually it shouldn't be like that uh when you are entering somewhere you you shouldn't be holding especially like those institutions you shouldn't be holding any weapon or ammunition or anything multiple reasons of course as as we know but uh, yeah that happened cool all's well that ends well and uh, yes. we do hope you soon get a chance to have your zip lining bucket list complete as yeah. well <laughs> definitely definitely hopefully soon maybe you can join me absolutely i'm going to hold you to that <laughs> definitely <laughs> all right and the final question of this section that if there's one thing you'd want to change about your life are uh, this what could that possibly be uh definitely traveling more or uh, using uh, any any free time not to uh, to waste it by uh, just uh, laying down or or in front of tv uh, traveling more exploring more and uh, going to new places that's for sure like uh, that's that's something that i would do uh, more and change uh, you know always we say like yeah we don't have time but when you think about it we always have a portion of time to to satisfy our own needs uh, to be with family, to uh, to to hang out with friends. Um, so yeah, definitely it would be to travel more, but to travel more with friends and family. Yeah, that that would be something that I would like to 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 change a bit and uh, to do more. Awesome. I think you have a long way ahead, so there is still a lot of time that you have where you can fulfill this wish of yours. So again, I wish you all the very best for that. <laughs> sure. Thanks. All right, Addis. And while well, you're having a fantastic conversation, but we have to now start wrapping things up. So we are on to a final question, a sign off signature question. What does being human mean to you? What sort of a human being would you want the world to remember you as? Ha, very good question. I mean, uh, we all know that uh, human beings are, are the, 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 the creatures or God created us uh, different from others that uh, God gave us brain, right? So, so we are there to, to think with it. So, so yeah, for me, a uh, human being is a person who, who really uh, thinks about not only themselves and uh, their, their ego, but about 
everybody else around them. So the community, uh, their, their close ones, loved ones, and how to, to make it better. So, um, this is, this is pretty much, uh, what, what we are human, we, we humans are. We are different than other creatures by, by having, uh, the, the, the thoughts or how we can think about things that will impact us or others around us. So pretty much this is what's, what's human or human being for me. Like, uh, be, be peaceful, uh, be respectful to others and you, you are a human. Uh, what I would love people to remember me uh, for is, is pretty much those attributes. Let's say I would like to do some some uh, impact that that will have positive impact on people as or or, or humanity in, in future. You know, we always I always sit and think about it a bit, and I see all of those uh, let's say um, leaders or, or historical uh, figures that made an impact and. Uh, I, I think about them while I read books or watch documentaries. Okay, what positive and negative things did those guys do? And through history, we, we know a lot of people who did like very bad and negative things and a lot of people who did positive. And of course, we try to learn out of them. So um, I think I would love to, to be one on the positive side, of course, and have some impact that people will remember me of uh, changing, uh, changing stuff, uh, changing things in the world for better uh, human beings, for, for animals, for, uh, for, for the planet in general. Amazing. I think I just, these are some wonderful thoughts to wrap up this conversation with. I think you are already bringing about change in your own personal ways, at least in the business world, right? Through your yeah. innovative and disruptive changes. There is so sure. much impact you're creating and let's hope in the coming days we hear more about the initiatives which you are doing. So yeah, we'll all be keeping a close eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, really, it was a great pleasure uh, to talk to you and, and be here. And uh, yeah, we all have uh, impacts uh, on our in our own way. So yeah, let's see how we can uh, do it in a positive way and have a change. Absolutely. So thanks a lot, Adis, for your time. It was wonderful to have you on the show. And as always, to our wonderful listeners, thanks a lot for tuning into the show. We hope this episode gave you a good glimpse of the human side of Adas Chimin. Someone born in Croatia to Montenegrin parents but has now transcended those boundaries and has become a global citizen. Someone whose journey began in sales at a young age by trading and selling Pokemon stickers in elementary school but has now made waves in the business world through his amazing venture. Someone who has been held at gunpoint and finally someone who has had a great passion for travelling, hiking, photography and what not. That for us is Adis Shimin. So, if you enjoyed today's episode, do stay tuned in because we shall soon be releasing yet another episode and another compelling story from the telecom space. And do follow the podcast on your preferred streaming channel. On behalf of Humans of Telecom, this is your host Anurag Agarwal signing off for now. Take care.